Welcome to this fifth in a group of six webinars hosted by Board Pro and Boardworks. I'm John Page and this is Graham Narkis and in this session we're talking about board meetings. Welcome to this fifth module where we're going to talk about board meetings and of course a board meeting is where the board does its work. The surprising thing we find in a lot of board reviews, we, we look at uh, meeting papers for example and you look at the agenda and you, you think why is the board even at this meeting because this doesn't look like a board meeting it looks like a management team meeting that the board's been invited to. That's right it comes out there and that earlier comment about being a layer of management yeah. and, and, and spectators to management busyness which is not correct. Spectators running onto the governance field. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, it, it's it's really important that the board owns its own meetings, so the board meetings are board meetings and they're not management meetings that the board goes to. And that means, if you flow on from that, that the chair has to be in charge of the meeting from A to, from woe to go, really, and, and particularly in terms of agenda design uh, as well as being then piloting uh, the meeting through, through its course. Um, there needs to be for most boards a lot more intentionality, I would describe it as, in terms of what they're going to spend their time on. And, and that's reflected in, in agendas and work plans and that sort of thing. We'll come back and talk about that, that in a minute. But just, you know, a board meeting to be successful has to be well planned. And it's got to be more than just a list of agenda topics. It's got to have something that sort of holds it together uh, whether that's a, a theme or just the way the topics are organised so that they have a logical sequence. But just rather than just a whole series of ticket offs, and you see directors in board meetings, they're just going through ticking off, ticking off, ticking off. It's like we're, we're, we're here to get through the agenda rather than produce value. Yes, and that is, that's a very good question for a board to reflect on at the end of the meeting, did we add value today and, 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 and where was it? And this idea that Graham raised of intentionality is a really core idea. The board needs to be intentional about where it spends its precious time. Yeah. It doesn't have very much time in a year, so where is it going to spend its time? Yeah, I, you commented in an earlier session that maybe 1% of the time, but another way of thinking about it is that the time taken up by board meetings over the course of a year in face time is probably not much more or even the equivalent of a full-time working week for an executive team, right? And it's got to exercise influence and accountability in that very small sliver of time. So the, the time management of a board meeting is absolutely critical. And if, if a board is not really focused on the value add, then it can easily end up wasting not only its own time but management's time because management might have been producing papers for that meeting to support the meeting which are completely useless but they might have spent hours and hours preparing them. Yeah so it comes back to the early discussions about what is the organisation trying to achieve, what are its key challenges, what are the outcomes and measurements so, so that things that are coming to it are set in the context of what we are trying to do at the highest level. Yeah. I, as I said before, the, the, the chair's role in that is absolutely critical. That's not to exclude the chief executive or the company secretary or board secretary, whatever, who's involved with, with management of, or assisting with the management of the board meeting, being participants in that process. But the chair has to own it. Uh, just, just recently I've seen several really excellent examples of, of chairs, once the board packs come out, actually then writing a one-pager essentially to their fellow board members and to the executive team saying this is how I'm going to manage the meeting, this is where I'm going to put the emphasis of time, uh, these are the topics that, that you need to be really well prepared on, these are the things maybe optional uh, in terms of deep dive in terms of your preparation but just giving a sense in advance of how the meeting needs to go for it to be successful. And it's quite useful for the chair to repeat that at the beginning of the meeting in the room, just making sure that everybody's on the same sheet about that. Is there anything that, that we've missed that we need to be spending time on? What are we trying to achieve out of the meeting? So that everybody's on the same frame. Yeah, the, the agenda for a meeting often becomes very rigid, you know, and a long time ahead of the meeting. 
And I think one of the important things that a chair should do is, just following on from your comment, confirm the agenda at the start of the meeting, yep. right? And, and if the board is having board only time, as it's often referred to, ahead of that meeting starting in terms of its substance, that's a very good time for the board to discuss what do they really need to get out of the meeting today? And is the agenda as it's been pre-circulated the right agenda? Might even change it on the day in order to make the best possible use of the board's time that day according to the circumstances of the organisation. So, so a, a board has two agendas it's working to. One is the per meeting agenda and the other is what we call an annual agenda or, or work plan. And in our work we spend a lot of time boards trying to fix particularly the meeting agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because a board has maybe two to three hours of concentration time right before everybody starts sort of fading a little yeah, bit yeah, and thinking yeah. about when their planes are leaving and yeah. looking at their devices. So they need to focus in the right place to start with. So, so you start with the important stuff. Uh, you, you don't start with the chief executive's operational report because that just takes the board into operations and it's hard to get them, get them out again. So mm -hmm. the structure of the agenda is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of stuff which is, it just, just if it's monitoring and it's within policy, if it's a noting material, well, not too much of that. It really just belongs at the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's for information. It's for yeah. the background yeah. to the meeting rather than being the focus of the meeting yeah. because your, your two hours or so uh, of really good thinking time, where that, that's when they should be dealing as a board with the most cognitively demanding topics, when yeah. they're relatively fresh and, and, and you know, there is an energy flow through a board meeting and sometimes it needs a little bit of warming up going on but actually the preliminary should be kept to, to a minimum and as you say we, we don't want the front end of the meeting to blow out and there'd be very little time left at the end which is the way board meetings used to be organised. There'd be all sorts of committee reports, a chairman's report, chief executive's report, all of stuff that could be taken as read. And, and even the confirmation of the minutes, sometimes that can absorb a huge amount of time because somebody who wasn't at the meet, previous meeting, they want to relitigate all the decisions that the board made previously. That's right. at, at, at the back as well. And the other thing is having an annual work plan. And we often um, challenge boards about what are the three or four things that are really vexing your mind, the challenges that are on the road ahead, the opportunities, you know. So, so schedule them for discussion you know, and drop one in a quarter or something. Mm -hmm. So make sure the board, again, is intentional about the matters that it wishes to add value to and schedule them. So mm -hmm. you can get management to bring papers, you can get third parties in. So it's mm -hmm. spending its time in the right place. So without that kind of planning, what tends to happen is it just reacts to what management's throwing up or, or today's crisis. It, it's hard to think about any posi anything positive out of the global COVID uh, crisis. Uh, but one thing that has been positive in my view is the way boards are now looking at their meetings is far more flex flexible, far more agile to mm. use a popular term and, and what we're starting to see is boards determining on the basis of what they need to discuss or process what is the most appropriate mode for the meeting. You know, is it a face-to-face -face meeting where you really need people to eyeball each other to talk through really challenging topics? Or is there stuff that just requires some sort of mechanical, just maybe a, an approval or something yeah. like that? You know, and our Zoom is more than enough to actually process that without waiting for a month or two months, whatever their meeting cycle is, to, to actually deal with that. Yeah, and it's also allowing, if there is a serious issue that the board needs to address, it is allowing them to convene a Zoom meeting at very short very, notice. Absolutely. Very, very, yeah, very yeah. short notice. And I, I think one of the things that that also does is create more flexibility about who you have on your board. Hmm. And, and particularly for, for, for some enterprises that are operating in a, in a global environment, they can have overseas directors yeah. that might only need to come here a couple of times a year, three times a year maybe, rather than what they might have had to do previously, which is, you know, a, you know, a, a 20 plus hour flight, you know, every month or something similar, you know. So one of the other useful ways, and, and it's, on, it's on the slides, is, is looking at a, at a quadrant about what's urgent and important. Yeah. And, and as far as possible, a board wants to be spending its time in normal circumstances on, on, on things that are important but not yet urgent because those are the ones you can influence and not down in the sort of, you know, 
crisis management. There'll be yeah. some of that, yeah. but particularly not in things that are neither urgent or important, yeah. uh, and yeah. because that's just a waste of everybody's. And, and we've used that matrix as a tool for helping boards to analyse how well they yeah. spend their time. And what, what I found doing that for, for a number of years, haven't done it so much recently, but for a number of years, actually produced a situation where they were, by their own admission, their own analysis of, of recent board meetings, saying that they were spending more than half their time on things that they later would consider unimportant. So it's half of that relatively short sliver yeah. of time that they're meeting for completely wasted. Another thing that we do uh, if we're doing board evaluations and sometimes we take a board pack and we go through and just mark these things have already happened, these are, these are discussions about things to happen and see which percentage of their time they're spending on things yet to happen. And again, in normal times it's kind of nice to see 60% or more because those are the only things that you can influence. So if the board is talking 60% of its time about things that are already happening, it can't be adding value. John, just one other thing we should refer to before we, we uh, close this session off is the decision tree. And, oh, yeah. and the different levels yeah, yeah. of information yeah. that the board should be expecting in order to, to do its best work. Yeah, yeah. So, so the information tree is fairly standard. Thing. At, at the bottom you've got raw data, which in the current world we have more than enough raw data. With a little bit of interpretation it becomes information. With a bit more interpretation it becomes knowledge and ultimately maybe we get a little bit of wisdom out the top. Now, the boardroom is not the place for synthesising information because we don't have time. So we're looking for management to add as much interpretation and value to information to get us into the knowledge area if we can. So, just, so if we get sort of raw management reports of data and information and operations... Lacking analysis and interpretation. It's yeah. in the wrong space, yeah. completely in the wrong mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Yeah. So look, we need to close this uh, session off now. So just to summarise what we've been talking about, first thing is to make sure that board meetings truly are board meetings. Yep. So, so uh, the second thing is about intentionality. The board deliberately thinking through through a, a, a longer term work planning process and then subsequently organising the meeting to suit so that the board is really only dealing with the stuff that only the board should be dealing with, or at least providing a, yep. a lead on. Uh, and then the other thing really is making sure that it has the materials that will support an effective meeting. And maybe something else that perhaps we haven't talked about that much is having some sort of evaluation at the end of a meeting yeah. about yeah. did we have a good meeting? You know, did, did we concentrate on the right things? Did we have the right information? Did everyone get a chance to say what was on their mind? Those, that sort of conversation. It's only a 10 minute conversation. It's, plenty of time at the end of a board meeting if it's properly managed to do that. And, and it comes back to something we said about earlier, you know, you want to get satisfaction from your service in the boardroom, so if you're not getting satisfaction there's a problem. So that's a perfectly good question to ask at the end of a board meeting, did we enjoy our time today? If yeah. not, why, why not? not? Yeah. So look, thanks for joining us across these six short seminars. Thank you to my colleague Graham, thank you to Board Pro. we really do hope this has been useful. If you want to continue the journey and learn some more, look to our website, boardworks.nz. We've got lots of great articles. We're committed to writing and have done for 20 odd years. There's a lot of reference up there and BoardPro's own site has a lot of material. So please avail yourself of that. Thank you for your time and we hope it's been useful to you.